My name's Guy Kestevan. I've been a professional mountain bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years. And this is the tech talk around on my reader's E140 9000 bike that I've just done the live ride review on. So I'm going to try and keep this quick before I get eaten alive by midges or the rain starts. So diving in onto the details, it's a, I mean, this is the top of the range of the E140 bikes. Uh, comes in two different colours. You've got this flip paint, this sort of green purple uh, as beloved of uh, wraps on m series beamers uh, by those in the uh, illicit pharmaceutical trade shall we say uh, but you know looks pretty spangly on this bike as well it's a carbon front end you've got this massive box section on the front uh, with thermo gate cooling fins on there uh, which act or marita call it a chimney hopefully you won't get smoke coming out of there but it keeps the uh, battery uh, nice and cool. It comes with a dual level protection plate so you've got a softer outside uh, protection on there and then hard inside and then the battery itself is in an alloy case so that helps with the thermal cooling. It's an EPH Shimano motor so the latest Shimano motor as you can see you know properly cut away underneath you've got that sort of keel on the underside there keeping everything uh, you know but it's very minimal really i mean it saved a lot of weight over the previous motor it's more powerful uh you're getting better battery efficiency as well so uh, you've got a little cover on there that's where it charges so obviously you need to keep that clean it can attract quite a lot of mud i've had to brush that out before i stuck the charger in each time uh main power on is there and then you've got your uh e8000 uh, display there and then your power toggle switch there and the Merida stem and head tube are all designed to kind of suck the uh, cables in nice and neatly. Uh, while we're here, you also get a Lazain light, uh, but at 310 lumens, it's really not worth uh, off-roading with. At best, it's for visibility in traffic. And to be honest, that's a bit of a blow, really. If that was a proper light, that would be a proper boost. If that has 1,000 lumens, that would be really, really useful for night riding and, you know, another bonus for having a battery on your bike. But... Anyway, you can't win everything. Uh, the fork is definitely a big win over the 8000 model uh, because you're getting a Performance Elite 36. Uh, so 36 mil stanchions rather than the 34, which is what the E8000 comes with. And you're getting full, low and high speed compression damping uh, on this Grip 2 damper. And that's matched by this uh, float DPS shock at the rear. Uh, again, full compression, low and high speed uh, on there with a the little three position gate there on the low speed compression damping to dial things in and your rebound. And to be fair, I mean, if you watch the live ride review, uh, very, very fluid, agile bike. You've got a trunnion mount on there. So the whole back end, I mean, it's actually a, uh, it's actually a single pivot system because there's no pivot on the chainstay here. The chain, the pivot is just above the dropout, but it's still a really, really active and agile fluid. You know, it's constantly mobile system. So if you want firmer pedaling or you want firmer support through the corners, definitely flick that switch into the pedal mode but if you just kind of want to flow and uh, cruise over everything stay fully open uh, you know it, it doesn't really kick back through the pedals because of the uh, way you know, because of the lack of chain growth in the system so it's only vis you know it's a visual distraction more than a mechanical one but if that's going to get on your nerves oh stop going on if you want it stiffer flick the pedal uh, lever it's got one on there so it isn't an issue as you can see uh, really low kinked uh, top tube so plenty of standover and the interesting thing about this bike is it's exactly the same frame as the e160 but with a shorter sh stroke shock at the back don't say that quickly uh, so it's only 133 mil at the rear rather than 150 on the e160 uh, but in terms of you know the short chain stay 20 27.5 2.6 mullet rear end uh, that's all the same and 29 uh, front wheel as well. They've got Continental Trail King tyres, Apex protection, uh, sidewalls on them, and a uh, black chili compound. So, I mean, to be fair, not the grippiest in terms of co rubber compound, but a fairly, you know, a fairly bitey uh, paddle tread on there uh, with decent side knobs once you've got them over to there. There's a bit of slip and drift if you keep it upright, but then actually works pretty well in a mullet format. Uh, you just got to be a bit wary of it in the front. You know, there's, as you can see, there's not much directional tread on there. Uh, going back up to the detailing, you've got, I mean, this is the flagship model. The E9000 is the most expensive E140 you can get, but Merida have chosen to stay with, you know, own brand grips, own brand stem, own brand bars, own brand saddle, own brand dropper. Uh, own, you know, you get a little mini tool underneath there, but 
there's nothing really spectacular on here for a seven grand bike. Uh, but it's all just really sorted, you know, the 50 mil stem, uh, a nice wide bar, you've got a Shimano dropper post lever. So, you know, Shimano XT brakes, Shimano with four pot levers on nice big rotors, uh, Shimano XT rear mech, Shimano XT cassette. You know, it's all really, really, really good stuff, but there's nothing crazy shout out on it, unless you know how good those uh, DT Swiss uh, EX5001 hybrid rims are, which they are brilliant, those spline hybrid wheels. Absolutely bomber tough. And again, a definite highlight uh, for going up. I mean, it's 1100 quid, more than the lower model, but I reckon in terms of wheels and forks alone, uh, there's a lot more control, reliability, and kind of long-term strength coming out of those, but it's a solid chassis anyway. Uh, like I say, carbon fiber front end, and a uh, fully alloy rear end. Uh, chainstay length, just shy of 440 mil. It's a 440 mil uh, seat tube length as well. So if you do want more reach, I mean, reach on this, because, like I say, they use the same frame between the, la the E160 and the E140, but a large E140 uses the same frame as a medium E160, so reach is a lot shorter at 450 mil, well, near as damn it, 450 mil on this bike, but the head tube's a bit lower, it's a bit steeper, 66.5 degree head angle, 76.5 degree seat angle, so you are getting a more sort of grounded, more, it's a better bike on flatter and climbing terrain, to be honest, and it's more agile as well, because there's less, less, there's less length in it, uh, which all kind of suits, it all just works really well together, really. It's certainly not a threatening bike or a super aggressive bike in any way, but just for cruising and playing about on the trails, I've an absolute blast on all the rides I've taken this on. You know, it's not done a thing wrong either. It's occasionally a bit flaccid and a bit flexy at the rear end, but it's got through and over everything, up, down, and along. And yeah, the Shimano kit has all worked really, really well. The Fox has worked really, really well. I mean. The current Performance Elite is just great gear and it just feels like none of it's overstressed and you never feel overstressed when you're riding it. It's just, it's just a right good laugh to ride really. And it, you know, it's got some decent fe little features in there. It's got this little MRP chain guide in there. Like I say, you've got decent protection on the chain stays. Uh, you know, you've got rubber protection on there, like I've already said, on the battery. Uh, thermal protection, I guess, in the motor vents there. I uh, haven't any, had any problems with it flooding, certainly, uh, in the rain. We've had a bit of that recently. Uh, the rear brakes tucked nice out of the way behind those seat stays. And Merida, you know, Merida of one of the top alloy and carbon manufacturers in the world. They build bikes for so many other people. And, but this bike's just, it's just really sorted all around. It's just really friendly, agile, playful. Kind really, of. Re I mean, super smooth this bike is. It's an absolute magic carpet. You are gonna want a bit of uh, low speed compression. Flick that climb lever on. If you're hitting more berms, and you want some cornering support on it. But anyway, that's how Marina, Marina have served it up. So many thanks to them for sending the bike in for test. Uh, massive thanks to Giro Cycling UK for sponsoring the channel and PEs and CRUD as well. Been using their products today. Absolutely spot on. They've, uh, you know, helped keep the mud out of my eye and the chain from squeaking. Uh, and I'll be using PE Cleaner when I get back. I think that's enough plug in for now. Uh, there'll be a code on this Giro Cycling uh, Wavy Roust uh, kit uh, that I'm wearing here. That'll be up on Insta, and I even remember to wear my socks today. So that's cool. Uh, look out for that. Uh, massive thanks to my Patreon supporters as well, who've been uh, pledging on a monthly basis to uh, help me spend more time filming. You know, that's really how I'm getting the channel funded at the moment. Uh, you know, these edits aren't paid for by the manufacturers, just by the channel sponsors, by YouTube ads, and by my Patreon supporters. So if you like what I'm doing, uh, please consider subscribing and playing a small amount on a monthly basis. And if you uh, join on the investor scheme, you get your name scrolling up like these guys at the moment. But if you can't spare that loose change at the moment, uh, please share, please click for notifications, subscribe and tell your mates about the channel because that's the best way, way for it to grow because I hope you're enjoying the content. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kest TV talking about Merida's top of the range E140 9000.